All right, y'all, we starting out with the one round liner. Well, not the one round, seven round liner. Going in badly touching it. And start moving our hand. I gotta find something else to start tattooing on. Cause this whole thing be moving like it's, I try to use it like it's a table, but it's really not. Just be on the armrest. We knock that little piece and we gonna come around. Bad it tapping, you don't wanna do too much stuff. Like I said, remember the dabs that it wiping? That's another way you can um, preserve your stencil by not wiping as much. Just try to dab that extra ink off. And that's another thing. Remember, you don't got to apply no pressure. Just let the needle do the job. You know, we run that seven volts. You got a lot of ink in one spot, you know, don't forget you be doing your ends, you ain't wipe that down. And if we need to, of course, we can always come back with our free ride line if you want to tighten anything else up. But steady going with that hook up. Matter of fact, mine, I'm going to go with that hook up. Try to hover that machine consistently. Same depth. Why well, ain't no spots getting darker than the other things like that? So if your machine drop down and it go a little deeper, sometimes deeper, it don't gotta always scar or nothing like too deep, but it'll definitely get a bold the line versus badly touching it. So just know that badly touching it is definitely gonna give you a thinner line out of whatever line that you're using. Knock them out. <clears throat> Dab and tip with that black. You're going to keep running it down. Hold it down, tap it. I don't know if y'all can see it, but my, my mistakes, I always tell people when drawing names, make sure these spaces even out. And that's one thing I didn't do. They close, but it definitely could have been a little tired. It's not bad. So just make sure you get your, like, thick and thin. Like, thin line, then you got your bowl line. Up with your thin, down with your bowl, basically. 
Let's back up and down. Oh, back slightly hitting it. No, don't forget to curve your hand however you need to curve your hand. You know, whatever you need to do to get that clean pull on. You, know, you can't walk a tight rope if you ain't really in a comfortable, um, you ain't planted in a comfortable spot. So make sure you're comfortable before you pull it, even if you have to swipe before you even pull that line. To get used to what angle you're going to come in at. Uh, I'll tell people practice those circles, lines, whatever you need to do. So then basically all that tattoo on, you gotta pull that line. All in the wrist, back and forth. So what I'm thinking about doing is going back over it, like tightening up some of it with my three round liner. Right now this all a seven round liner. I think we did the whole bottom with like on um, three round though. Say in order to keep those edges clean, you basically gotta lightly touch it with the line and not trying to pull on the bowl and going deep. That's gonna create a bowl the line. And that's any tattoo, you ain't in a rush to finish it, so you ain't gotta try to hurry up and knock it out. Take your time. You say, oh yeah, oh yeah, you did tell me about the EP10. That's another thing I say, watch out. See how the E's is a little different? What I try to go for is the same E. So it feels a lot better. I should have just did it. But I kind of just went in with the black marker though. Yeah, yeah, you did tell me about the EP10. I'm about to go over the P a little bit, then we're gonna wipe it down. Let's see. Well, I got this E2 that we need to hit. You're barely tapping it, trying to get it solid. Oh, the villain arts? Yeah, villain arts was down here, what? That was September or October, something like that. But I know the way the villain arts work. I think once you buy your boot, it's like a hundred dollar minimum. I know they were telling me that you could charge things like that. So it's like you can't have no sales or nothing on your page because if you got sales on your page, they gonna expect that you're charging under the hundred dollar minimum. And I guess they don't choose you to be in the own thing. So I guess the only people that's probably charging those prices. I'm not sure. I know I was denied one time because I guess it was a sale, two for fifty I had on my page. I don't know what they had to do with you know the shop sale, but that's what they say and you know. Maybe I'll try again, maybe not. <clears throat> So like y'all could easily tell somebody like, oh yeah, you just can't do no sales. You gotta do the minimum of a hundred dollars. Y'all could say that versus just like, oh no, we ain't, you wasn't chosen because of sale on your page. It don't make sense. But okay, maybe next time. Let's wipe it down, y'all. Wipe it down. And like I said, you're gonna use the same ointment. Rub it on there. Apply a little pressure. There you see it smearing up. You take a dry paper towel. Then when we try to get it clean, and we can see what all we're missing. I see that P for show. Sure. I'm gonna have to go over the P. A lot more bolder, kind of almost bold to that T. And they definitely got some lighter spots too. Like this, I want them to keep this lighter. 
I mean, put some bold, some of the light. But yeah, that kind of <clears throat> give a, its own aesthetic, like thin. Then they're going to come to bold, come around here. I guess bold going to come back that thin going across. Bold. But yeah, I want it all one side. It'll feel super plain. So this right here is like a um, 27. I'm surprised. What is it on? Five focus? No. But yeah, this is how big the 27 on. Um, I don't know why them all ain't been auto focusing like they should have auto focused, but this is the 27 on um, round mag, curve mag. But also when I did a blackout, I had to use this 35. Right there. Yeah, 35. And these are like they way bigger. But I also got like 45, but I only use this for like when if I'm doing a blackout or something like that. I ain't gonna use that for something regular though. The biggest I go for like clouds and some big shade spaces. Some big shade spaces, I would do that, but a blackout. This was a 49 on um, curve, man. But I, I only needed it because I had to do that blackout, though. I ain't had to really use it for nothing else so far. Unless it's gonna be a real big, like a back piece. So my preferred brand would be like Mans Pro because I feel like it's been the sharpest to me. It was pretty close to like quadrant needles and quadrant pretty expensive. Yeah, Mans Pro I had like just got from the tattoo convention like 18 round liners. And that was quadrant needles which was like cost almost $40 for the box. I think on Amazon the Mans Pro cost the pretty about $23. And it was worth it. You say you only use wormhole cartridges? And that's crazy. I never, I never tried wormhole yet. I'm gonna have to give it a try though. I say seven volts for on um, lining. And you say, do I use cartridges? I use, I use curve mags. Every now and then, round shaders and liners though. For smoother shade, I'll definitely say curve mag. What is all of the technique that you're using, like as far as like cross hatching? So I, I think you could get some soft on um, shade with both of them. But my pre preference is just curve mag. My my own um, shader most likely gonna be running lower than my own liner, but I definitely ran like depends on the machine. I done ran the shader at like eight volts, eight volts before. But of course you gotta be moving fast with your hand. Like you can't just be boom shading regular soft. No, you gotta be fast with that, and you gotta be fast and trying to get soft. So I think it's just too much to kind of you know work with. But if it's automatically set at six point four, leave it at six point four. Take your time, build up your tones, and you're gonna be good. And the reason I know it's going to change up your whole flow, that's just like your ink caps. I set my ink caps up a certain way from like black to my light. My black is all the way closest to the needle, which on the right side, my light is towards the left. So if I switch it up backwards, I'll be like, be confused. Just like I'm not used to my ink caps being on the table while I'm tattooing, I'm used to it being on the station. So I'm keep turning, even though I don't got my ink caps up here for as practicing. I'm keep turning around looking for them ink caps because that's what I'm used to and how I'm tattooing. So it's about building that habit up. So don't build no bad habits that you know it's going to be tough to break. Alright y'all, we about to wipe this down. Yeah, I freehand the letters. I need to start practicing more of my own um, lettering so I have more styles to um add to the arsenal, you know. I uh, definitely have more styles to you know, offer. But right now, this is just my basic cursive that I just freehand. And I kind of add the little swirls and stuff to make it look like, you know, something. Make it look a little better. Now, this is what I'm about to do. I'm about to turn the machine on low as it could, which is... Well, that is five volts. And I'm about to show you how I basically do the shading. And I just basically kind of brush it across. See how it's basically pushing across? And that's why I was saying, Daniel Silver, if he used that three round liner, he had to be probably running probably way lower than this because this machine hit pretty hard. 
and it only go as low as five volts. That's one thing that's crazy about it. It only go as low as five. So with this machine, I definitely probably would use like more of a four. Cause you can see how fast it is. Cause it only go to five. And you see those little dots trying to pick up. So all you just gonna do is keep on kind of building it up. So you can either push up, you can pull down, or you can try to go straight pendulum. Back and forth, back and forth. And you're going to pick up that whip shading. So with the whip shading, if you go slow, your dots closer together. You can see that, those patterns, versus going fast. The dots further apart because the machine still run at the same speed. You can see how those dots look separated versus those look closer. So you're about to be moving on to the portrait. And you can see how much that really stayed there. Not much of it, but it's there though. 